Hi, I'm Sharon Hudson-Dean, the Chargé d'Affaires at the U.S. Embassy in Oslo, Norway. I'm really excited to welcome you today to a great discussion about the importance of Paralympic winter sports. We have two gold medal winning Paralympic skiers with us, American Andrew Kirka and Norwegian Jesper Saltvik Pedersen. They are going to be interviewed today by ski legend Axel Lund Svindal, ambassador for Stiftelsen V. The United States has long promoted the rights of people with disabilities. In 1990, we passed a landmark piece of legislation, the Americans with Disabilities Act, that protects the rights of all persons with disabilities and promotes reasonable accommodation and accessibility to all aspects of life for people with disabilities. Our great friends in Norway have also done the same. In 1980, Norway hosted the Paralympics in Yilo, at which alpine paraskiing took place. And since then, our Paralympians have only continued to excel. In the Paralympics and Olympics, Team USA shares four key values. Pursue excellence, lead courageously, serve others, and foster belonging. Andrew and Jesper, we wish you the best of luck in your next races. We'll all be watching with great excitement. Over to you, Axel. Thank you, Sharon. And I have to say I was uh, very happy when I was asked by the U.S. Embassy and uh, Stiftelsen V to do this conversation and interview with two of my fellow skiers. Jesper, Andrew, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You are, of course, uh, hot competitors coming up for the World Championships, Hafjell uh, Lammer, 12th uh, of January. Yeah. How do you feel, Jesper? Ready? Yeah, I feel confident. Yeah. It's going to be really fun to get to ski at home. And Andrew, you're in a uh, hotel room in Colorado because you're training so hard to beat Jesper, That's right. right? Yeah. So, so hard, hard to beat Jesper, yes. Yeah. It takes everything I have. But you're well prepared? I think I'm well prepared, yeah. Uh, speed is my specialty, and uh, I think we, we both know I have a very good chance. Jesper's looking a little nervous, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, thank you guys for being here. So cool. Uh, let's start with uh, you, Andrew. You are from Anchorage, is that right? Uh, yes. Um, I fly in and out of Anchorage, Alaska. I actually live in Palmer, Alaska. Um, so I'm an Alaskan. Uh, I travel the world and represent the United States uh, Paralympic ski team. And uh, I'm a gold and silver medalist from Pyeongchang. Uh, I got the gold in the downhill, silver in the Super G. And broke my back when I was 13 years old in an ATV accident. So uh, that's how I became a Paralympic athlete. You ask, yes, but you're a bit younger, uh, yeah. but you do have, uh, I would say, similar stats from uh, 2018. Also a gold medalist giant slalom, right? Yeah, I won gold medal in giant slalom and uh, bronze in the super combined. So uh, kind of the same. Uh, and I've been, I was born with spina bifida, so I've been in a wheelchair all my life. Uh, and my parents first took me out when I was two years old. So I've kind of been a sit skier my whole life. And uh, yeah, that gives me a bit of another dimension to the sport than Andrew. But yeah, we it's cool to be good competitors ahead of the world champs in Norway. So we have, I mean, in Norway we say sit ski, but you guys say adaptive skiing, right? Yeah, we say adaptive skiing, but we also say sit ski. It's uh, it's kind of wh whatever refers to what we do as an athlete. And um, you know, there's different programs. There's from recreational programs all the way to straight just race programs. And so it kind of depends on where you are at that level to what the reference is. So sit skiing is usually referred to kind of more beginner skiers, um, where uh, adaptive racers or adaptive athletes is kind of more for the, the more professional of perfect athletes. Maybe let's just uh, stay with that a little bit because uh, yeah, like you said, yes, but you started adaptive skiing two, when you were two years old, is that right? Yeah, my parents first took me out when I was two years old, so <laughs> my, my, my whole life kind of. Uh, and I've been really lucky to been able to do it my whole life. Uh, I skied for the first time alone when I was six and competed internationally for the first time when I was 13. It's been a cool ride, and uh, I've, uh, I think I have like 30 World Cup victories or something like that, so almost on your level soon. Well, you've been dominating the World Cup lately, <laughs> so I <Yeah>. think... Uh, <laughs> 
well, I have 36. 36 so, yeah. I mean, that's going to be <laughs> one out of the park soon. <laughs> yeah, soon. Andrew, you were athletic. Like, you did wrestling and other sports, is there? When I was 13 years old, you know, I had won six straight state championships and a national title as a wrestler. And uh, I had always wanted to be uh, an Olympian. I had always wanted to be the best in the world. And then when I was introduced to ski racing, it actually brought that back into my life because there was a lot of depression that happened after my injury. You know, when you're 13 years old and then you lose your your legs and you kind of, or I should say your legs get disabled, right? Um, you you kind of, there's, there's, there's moments that are kind of, uh, saddening, you know, because you're trying to find your new identity and who you are as an individual. And um, that was when ski ra- skiing was introduced to me. I found out that I could be a Paralympic athlete, that I could be the best in the world, and it rejuvenated my life. And that's why I committed everything to it uh, from that moment, because I knew that I could keep pursuing and uh, keep pursuing my dream and, you know, keep pursuing the things that really made me who I was before my accident. And so I could keep being the same person afterwards and mm. saved my life, really did. That's an awesome story. And I think it also shows the importance of having, you know, that the possibilities are there, but uh, also that people know about the pos- possibilities that, uh, you know, it doesn't help if the possibilities are there, but they're hidden, but uh, we need to really show what's, uh, what's possible. And yeah. that's why you guys are awesome role models for, uh, you know, anyone else uh, experiencing a similar situation. Thank you. Yeah, there's lots. There's, it's astounding how many adaptive or disabled athletes there are in this world that haven't even had the opportunity to become an athlete yet. Yeah. And um, I think that's why this is important. What we're doing here is important um, so that we can introduce people just as a possibility that, hey, you can get out. You can be an athlete. You can even be professional. You can compete. You can, you know, you can I think that's the big thing, you know, is introducing people with disabilities to the mindset that they can. Mm. You can do anything. You just need a different perspective to get it done. Yeah. We are, I mean, me and Jesper, we work with the uh, foundation Stiftelsen V, and, uh, you know, the focus there is both on uh, the, let's say, the elite level and also down to the clubs. But definitely, I think the... The maybe the biggest potential, or at least where you can uh, meet the most people, is what you're saying in the local communities. How do you make those programs uh, available, but also known so that uh, it's not by chance that you run across them, but uh, yeah. it's almost like you know you can't miss it because it's right there. Exactly. So I'm really, really lucky because I grew up in Alaska, and Alaska was actually where one of the very first and one of the largest adaptive programs started, uh, Challenge Alaska. And it has branched out from there. There's now uh, Challenge Aspen, Challenge Colorado, Challenge East Coast. Um, there's uh, Adaptive Sports Eastern Sierras. There's Adaptive Sports that are scattered throughout the United States. But the thing is, is that there aren't Adaptive Sports in every single ski town or every single area. Um, it, there's probably an Adaptive Foundation in maybe a 12th or a 20th of all the different ski resorts scattered throughout the United States. Mm. I don't know if that's similar um, in Norway. No, I think in Norway, the the biggest problem is probably like that pe- a lot of people sit inside and don't know about the opportunities because there are p- opportunities for everybody, but you don't, there's nobody knocking on your door and getting you out. You have to mm. just yeah, get out and uh, try by yourself first and then go to a club mm. uh, but to to get yeah with the world champs in Norway I think we can show the sports to people and show that uh, everything is possible mm. I mean uh, we uh, let's stay with that uh, yes but because um, you created the a good debate I would yeah. say in Norway uh, when you uh, posted on your social media and you did some interviews about the not cheese. Yeah, I was yeah, I was gonna I was gonna say the lack of price money, but yeah. Uh, yeah, the cheese is probably a better way of saying it. Uh, yeah. Why don't you tell us about that? Yeah, it was one of the cheese we got in Switzerland. Uh it's a nice cheese, uh but it's like uh, when you race you can get up to half a million kroners for per victory and uh, we got a cheese. Uh so I kind of just wanted to inform people that that's how the situation is. Mm. Uh and it really worked out and uh, people got angry and uh, 
in this World Champs in Norway, we're gonna have uh, uh, prize money for the first time yes. in, uh, able bo in disabled bodied uh, alpine skiing. Mm. So it's really cool that uh, it works to speak up and uh, yeah, it, yeah, it's gonna be really cool. What, what's your thoughts on that, uh, Andrew? I think that's awesome. Um, to very, 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 very simply, because uh, adaptive sport, you know, Paralympic sport, hasn't really been seen with equality throughout the world, and um, having it, having prize money, simply shows equality. Yeah. And I think that's that's something that's a huge step forward um, for mankind, for humans, and for Paralympic sport in general, because um, you know we are athletes as well. We work really, really hard. You know, you've seen it. Uh, we are out there. We work. We work just as hard, and um, we do the best that we can to uh, to compete and to win and to have have it shown that hey, you know, people care about what we're doing. You know, people are recognizing that we are athletes as well. That's something that's huge. We're also actually putting on some uh, initiatives here to really broadcast also the races uh, from yeah. from Hotfield uh, st again starting January twelfth, yeah. uh, and they will be will be broadcasted yeah. so uh, you know we can really people can get much better impression yeah. for what you guys are doing but i have to say there as well it's when you see it up close it's something else it's yeah. something very different so the tv production doesn't justify <laughs> i mean for you for instance andrew when you like you said you went straight down and then at the bottom of the hill just you know what that uh, <laughs> What what that looks like up close the the, the downhill skiing yeah. in the sit ski, it's, uh, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's it's unbelievable. But uh, maybe let's round off with um, first uh, both of you like your your strongest and your weakest uh, side like technically uh, skiing, okay. and also your expectations for the for the world championships. And we'll have that as our uh, yeah. closing statement. So Andrew, if you want to start, what's your What's your biggest uh, advantage compared to Jesper or any other competitor and your uh, where you have the most, let's say, uh, potential to improve and uh, also uh, what your <laughs> expectations are? Most <laughs> potential to improve, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, it's a very positive My, uh, way of framing it, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. I really like that. Okay. Um, so uh, my area of expertise is speed, downhill, uh, super G, and um, those are my two strengths. Um, I'm. I think I'm a good overall skier. Um, I'm always podium potential, but um, I'm not a specialist in tech like uh, what Jesper is. I definitely uh, have room to improve in tech. <laughs> But um, I would say, yeah. But if we talk um, technically, uh, Andrew, does that mean you're like fearless and you're really good at staying aerodynamic and go straight, but uh, you're not as uh, good at one, stopping when you come to the finish, <laughs> and two, you know, putting on uh, turns? I've never had a crash in the finish line. <laughs> I've, <Okay>. had. <laughs> <laughs> I've had too, like that yeah. happens all the time. It does. Yeah, um, but uh, I, I would say... Uh, Downhill is certainly my specialty, and uh, I'm looking forward to competing uh, in Norway. I would say my expectations are a podium finish. Uh, currently, I'm sitting in a spot um, where we haven't had a chance to, to ski a lot of speed globally, and that's unfortunately due to COVID. Yeah. And yes, Ben? Uh, the results, like, until now this season, has showed that we've done a good job in training, mm -hmm. uh, and I hope to be a podium candidate for all the disciplines, really. Uh, I think downhill is probably my weakest, uh, where Andrew has his strongest, so that's nice for us. <laughs> but uh, That's why we're so good friends. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, but yeah. I've had some, I've had two World Cup victories in downhill as well, so I can be up there on a good day, uh, but uh, probably tech is my my opportunity to take the goals now, but uh, I hope to be up there in all the disciplines. Which means, again, com like being technical here, you're like the turns, clean turns, that's your... Uh, yeah, clean turns in GS and stuff like that is yeah. what I, what's most fun. Uh, and uh, I have to work with my head and try to be as crazy as Andrew in downhill and mm -hmm. just uh, take the fastest line down. Well, cool. Well, again, Guys, thank you both for uh, coming to this uh, little event and uh, 
Fingers crossed for the upcoming World Championships uh, in Halfville, January 12th. Yep. Say that again because that's important because we'll actually, it's really cool. We'll have some good broadcasting going on so people can yeah. really tune in and check it out. But uh, thanks again for coming. And um, Andrew col in Colorado, good luck with the rest of your preparations. And yes, Pit, always nice to see you. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye.